Welcome everybody, this is How to English Teach and Learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. Dun, 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 dun. We're back with season five of Gavin M's How to English Pod. Happy to be back, Gav. Happy to be back with you too, M, and we have so much to discuss. Slightly new format, everyone. Would you like to explain this to us, Em? Because you have had a very interesting idea for the show. Yeah, I thought we could change it up a bit. I decided maybe just to talk about our week at work each episode. So we come to the pod with highs, lows, questions. Hopefully answers. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag, I think, this time. But very real, which I think is a good idea. It sounds very real. I like the idea of us sitting down after a long week of teaching and learning. And we can summarise some of these interesting situations, incidents. I um, hope not too many of those. But <laughs> yeah. Together. Bit like a staff room vibe I'm going for. I'm getting a staff room vibe. I keep looking up and seeing the clock and it's like, oh, have I got five minutes till I need to teach? <laughs> <laughs> okay, really getting into the mood. So yes, Gav, I've made some notes of my week and the trials, tribulations, ups, downs, maybe not so many ups. No, it was a good week, but I should have written down some highs too. Have you not got too many highs to share with us? Well, I should have written down some, but my maybe challenge for myself is to note the good things as well as the challenges. Well, hopefully some positives will come from these challenging moments. Mm -hmm. So how would you like to start? Gav, tell me about your week. I have made a short list of things. Can I just tell you some of the topics I have and you can say which one kind of speaks to you? Okay, And then ahead. we'll discuss that one. Yeah. For example... Starting Monday, simultaneous interpretations. Oh, yeah, let's go with that. Oh, but M, that's the first one. We didn't get through the list. <laughs> I'm a methodical person. Let's <laughs> just take it one at a time. Okay. Do you know what simultaneous interpretations are? I can guess it's when you get your student to, in real time, translate something that they... I don't know how you do that, actually. Would they be listening to something in one ear and talking... Through the other end. Through the other end, no. <laughs> Talking <laughs> at the same time. Yes, yeah, so they're wearing headphones and they're listening to somebody speaking in one language and then they interpret that and speak to me in English. How do you know if it's right? I know if it's right as far as I understand what the student's talking about. Okay, yeah. And also I can follow basically the topic so if the student says things that sound absolutely wrong mm. I say well are you sure that's right that's a lot for you you've got to keep track not only of all the grammar and mistakes errors vocabulary but also the point they're making and if it makes sense logically exactly Oof. make notes at the same time I am making notes at the same time that's it so I wait till the end when the student's finished and then I give some feedback so it yeah. could be pronunciation it could be as you say grammar it could be tenses things get dropped off often articles are missing prepositions mm. might be wrong and because the student's going so fast those little errors are probably the ones that are going to be repeated quite a lot mm -hmm. wow so it's absolutely fascinating. So uh, technically, it's really interesting how it works. And then in practice, it's very intense. Yeah, I've never done it, actually. I've done translation, but never real time. And that was on Monday, yeah? That first was thing. Monday. That was the first one. Wow. How about your Monday? What was first? Well, I had a delivery, which was a bit annoying because I was teaching online. So... A delivery to my door. I oh, had a box of vegetables <laughs> arrive. So, yeah. Were you expecting them? I was, and they were a bit late, and it was annoying because I had to start the lesson knowing they were going to come, and I knew that I'd have to stop the students probably in mid conversation because it was that you know small talk thing on Monday. How was your weekend? Blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, as predicted, someone was right in the middle of telling me when. The doorbell went. Oh, so what did you do? 
I had to do the very wide eyes, finger up in the air because I was online kind of motioning I need to say something. And then I just said, I'm really sorry, I need to get the door. I'll be as quick as I can. And yeah, it was absolutely throwing it down really? outside. I felt really sorry for the delivery driver with the vegetables. So I took this box and got totally soaked. Oh, no. And then I had to come back to my lesson a little bit soggy. Do you try to schedule deliveries between your lessons or do you restructure yeah. your timetable so the students' lessons are like after your deliveries? Definitely the first one. I fit the vegetables in between lessons. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and meals as well, I guess. Yes, okay. yes. So anyway, on a more teacherly topic, I was doing quite a heavy financial lesson on Monday and I'd given some homework, mm -hmm. which I don't think the students had done. Oh, did you ask them? Yeah, they kind of... Do you of... always give homework, Em? Not to that class, no, but I thought actually because it was a crossword puzzle, it would be better if they printed it and did it in their own time. Oh, that's so much fun. Where did you find that? Uh, it's in accounting for business Ooh, finance. Fun, book. fun, fun. Mm. And well, yeah, it's about as fun as you can get with business financial language. So I'd given them this homework and I was just sitting there five minutes before the lesson thinking, they're not going to know these words. I wanted to go back through the answers with them. And the way that the book had presented it was like a gap fill sentence. And then you put the missing word in the space with the crossword puzzle and it fits together. But I knew that they would struggle to remember the words from the previous lesson. So I thought about the way to check the homework would be to say, OK, number one, what's the missing word? But they're not going to remember it. So I then decided to flip it on its head and just give them the answers on the crossword. So then we went through the crossword. So I picked like six across. What does accrue mean? Mm. Which was still hard, mm. but giving them the word was definitely the right way to do it rather than trying to elicit the word. That's a very, very good idea. Yeah, simple thing. But that was, yeah, Monday, quick, quick switch up of how I was going to check homework. That's a great way to review the previous lesson. Yeah. How did they do? Not bad. I would say they remembered about 60%. What do you do when they're stuck and they just don't know the answer? I gave it to them in a sentence. Um... Or just kind of gave them a synonym, see if they knew it from that context. So you got through it in the end. It wasn't a big, arduous task. No, it was fine. And I think I needed to definitely do it that way. Mm. That's Monday over with. <laughs> <laughs> I had a late cancellation during the week. Oh, and do you know why? Uh, I think a couple of them were ill. One of them was on holiday and they forgot to tell me and the last one just didn't show up. So you were just sitting waiting for them? This is an online lesson? This was also an online lesson, yeah. So how long did you wait? I waited 15 minutes. Now, Em, I have a, a policy. Mm. Can you guess what the policy is? Wait 15 minutes, then yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> so my policy is that the students should cancel 24 hours before the lesson starts or it's paid. Yeah, I think that's quite standard in TEFL. Do you think that's fair? I do think that's fair, but I will ask how long was the lesson supposed to be? The lesson was supposed to be 60 minutes. Well, I think that's definitely fair. You waited a quarter of that lesson. A quarter is a good number, isn't it? I think so, yeah. If they're coming, they should be there by then. And if I did 90 minutes? That would be 22 and a half minutes. Would you sit there for that long? It does sound like a long time, although I probably could get on with something else, as I often do when I'm waiting for my students to join. Which is a benefit of online teaching. You can just be checking email or filling in admin stuff. Mm. Mm. But that does seem like a long time, definitely. But yeah, it does happen. They mm. do join 20 mm. minutes late sometimes. Some of them do. And they say, oh, brilliant. Thanks for waiting for <laughs> me. And I'm thinking, oh, I was really going to just hang up. <laughs> You're saying it as if you wanted to just hang up, Gav. Well, I think if they can't arrive on time, then, you know, there's something wrong there, Em. Mm. Mm. 
Sometimes they've got a really good reason. Well, I respect that and I appreciate that. And they can just send me a WhatsApp or uh, an email if they're going to be late. Yeah, that's a good point. I think it's just the lack of respect if you don't get a message and you're just there and then they arrive and you're alone and they're like, yeah, well, of course you'd just be sitting in this empty space waiting. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's next with you? I was having a 90-minute lesson on Tuesday and from the beginning of the lesson... There was a very loud conversation going on in the background of one of the students' offices. Ah. And we could all hear it. Oh, dear. Um, but it was not in English, so it was in their own language, mm. but I couldn't understand anything. And sometimes it would be really loud and really laughing, and I just kept thinking, everybody knows what they're talking about except for me, but I don't know if it's okay that we're listening mm. because all these students are from different branches of the same company, so maybe they're talking about something private. I right. don't know. But apart from that, it just got really annoying every time that person spoke because they were on mute sometimes, but when they did want to contribute, it was like a real struggle to understand what they were saying because the level of the background conversation was almost at the same level as they're speaking. Oh, that's really annoying. It was. That should be a consideration if you've got an online lesson. I think you should try and find a quiet space to sit in. Yeah, it's not really fair for everyone else having to listen to it. And I didn't say anything for ages, but it was, yeah, it was a long, long conversation and it just kept going and Could going. you see the other students were getting frustrated? Most of them had no camera on, so it wasn't easy actually to see anybody's reaction. Mm. But I was getting annoyed, so I guess that's an indication that everybody else was. Um, in the end, I did just draw attention to it because mm -hmm. a lot of the time I try and just carry on without making it a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I like to focus on the lesson itself. But in the end, I did just say, what are they talking about? <laughs> They've been going on for a long time now. <laughs> It was just something about a delivery problem that they were having. I don't know how they got so much out of it. It was amazing. Did the student apologise for all the noise? No, I think they see it as not their problem. Or maybe they're so used to it that they don't notice it anymore. That's probably what it is, yeah. It's like when you're working in a big office environment, you tune out the background noise, but I don't really have that skill. I'm lucky to be working in a room on my own so any kind of background noise for me is actually really distracting it sounds very distracting i think as a teacher as well you're listening to all of the information coming to you and if there's mm. interference there that would be difficult that is true though what you say they probably were all a bit like what's the big deal this is just normal for us this it is might a have been more day. fascinating than the actual lesson Emma. i'm sorry to say <laughs> well that was my other thing i struggled with you know as you're you know as you're listening to these things, you do think, well, can I use this? Can this be part of the lesson? It's Maybe, a real life experience. Like you said about your translation interpretation thing. Maybe we could have done like real time interpretation. But I did think, well, if these people speaking speak English, they're going to be aware of the fact that their <laughs> conversation is being dictated to a group of people on a call. But I do try and use realia and like real things in my lessons. And I thought this is actually a really good opportunity to do that. But there are certain lines I don't cross. And mm. I thought that would be unprofessional, possibly breaking a lot of policies of the company. Like you're not supposed to talk too much about mm -hmm. company secrets or, you know, gossip by the coffee machine. It could have been that they were sitting next to the kitchen and it it might not have been about a delivery. It could have been about <laughs> someone having an affair in the office. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. But yes, it was a kind of choice whether I draw attention to it or ignore it or use it to my own benefit or just, yeah, or pretend it wasn't happening. Do you think the student will be more conscientious next time they have an online lesson? No, no, I really don't think so. I think that for them it's just a matter of course. So they possibly have no choice anyway. No. And if yeah. you said it's too noisy, then they just wouldn't be able to have lessons. Yeah, you've got to be careful, I think, because some of them have the luxury of booking a meeting room or going to a little booth or whatever, but some of them don't have that. So they just only have that one workspace. So I, I, I'm a bit careful about saying, can you do something about the noise? Mm. But that is part of being an online teacher, I mm. think. Well, if it was an offline lesson, then I guess you could just close the door. Yeah, exactly. And if, possibly shut the windows. If there was somebody outside talking loudly. Yeah, exactly. But you can't do that online. Em, I had a new student this week. How was that? 
It went very well. I asked lots of questions. I established the students' previous learning experiences. I asked them why they were doing a course, and it was very interesting. Did you click? I think so. Okay. The students seemed very happy at the end of the lesson. How do you know? Because the student said, I'm very happy. <laughs> that's, that's clear. That's <laughs> nice. I love it when it's that straightforward. Okay. So did they just volunteer that or did you say, how was that for you? Well, I got lots of reassurance throughout. And then I said, how was the lesson? Was it too long? Was it too short? Did we do enough of what you wanted? Uh-huh. Did you tell me everything you needed to? Do you have any more questions? And the student said, I am very happy. That's really good. I need to do that more. I like that kind of end of lesson sum up. Like, how was that? Was it okay? Did you enjoy it? Was it this enough? Was it that enough? I'm always a little bit worried the answer is going to be no, but it is good to do. I think. I think you have to accept it if the answer is no, and then you can learn from that and grow from it, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, you have got to face it, definitely. Because it might be something simple, like the lesson's too long, or it's at the yeah. wrong time, or I didn't understand everything you were saying, could you please speak more slowly? Yeah, yeah, and I think if you show the student that you're open to being, let's say, not criticised, but you're open to being flexible and changing your style I think that that puts them in a really good mood good rapport and they know they can say to you actually this is a bit difficult or I'm a bit tired can we take a break Mm. and sometimes that teacher student relationship can be a bit stricter like you can set it up to be a bit like I'm the teacher you have to do everything I say or you can't question me, Mm -hmm. which shouldn't be the case. No, I agree. Yeah, so that's really positive. Hmm. Gav, I'm trying to fix a lot of errors this year. I've made a resolution to myself that I'm going to really focus on my students' errors. That's a very good plan. Yes, it's going to be a challenge. My first crusade is present perfect. Mm -hmm. So my students do use it, but they don't use it correctly, which is weird because sometimes... I get students who just don't use it. They never learned it. They don't want to use it because they're scared of it. That might be that the student learnt it and then applies it to everything or they learnt it wrong. Or... I think they learnt it in a certain way, very narrow way, and they've applied it to lots of things. For example, they will say, I have been there last week. Oh. So these are the things that I'm trying to fix. Eb, I'm raising a hand now. I think the problem with this is that they're using a past finished time phrase with present perfect. But it is confusing because we do use present perfect with things like I've worked here since 2020. And there I would say it is correct because we're talking about a period of time. Typically using since or for. Yeah, but you can see the student's point of view. You're saying don't use present perfect with time phrases, but then they hear I've worked here since 2020 and they're like, oh, well, that's a time phrase. That is confusing. It's hard, but I mean, this is interesting for me because they have got it in a way. A lot of my students in the past don't even try and use it. You mean they've got the form? Yeah, they've got the form. They understand the concept a little bit. So I decided to use one of your worksheets this week. My worksheets? Yes. Thanks, Em. (laughs) It's very good. It compares past simple and present perfect. So it starts with a question. So the student has to choose the correct question. Have you had breakfast this morning or did you have breakfast this morning? Now, this depends a bit on the time you ask the question. Precisely, Gav. Precisely. Would you like to explain the difference? And this is what I got my students to do. I asked them to choose which question would be correct and then explain why they chose that question. Well, I would choose, have you had breakfast this morning if it was still morning time, before noon? But afternoon, I would say, did you have breakfast this morning? Very good, Gav. That is correct. Because the time is in the past. Yeah. So I'm really focusing on this idea of finished time or unfinished time. If I can get them to understand that, then I feel like I've achieved something. That's a big part of present perfect. Yeah. I mean, there are obviously different parts to it, but I think this is what they're getting a bit mixed up with if it's connected to now or if it's finished, completely closed time. So the worksheet, the excellent worksheet basically just has a series of questions and they need to form the question using present perfect or past simple based on the time 
in the question. Did you pre-teach all of this? No, I didn't. It was almost like a self-discovery. As we went along, we were asking questions like, have you bought any flowers this year? And if they got it wrong and said, did you buy flowers this year? Then I highlighted the fact that this year Mm. hasn't finished. Um, I can see where you said wrong, it had little inverted commas (laughs) over it. (laughs) I think you're hedging towards my problem and my question for you because I got about halfway through and I thought all of these questions with Present Perfect actually sound fine from an American perspective. So did you buy flowers this year? Did you have breakfast this morning and it's still morning? Past simple instead of Present Perfect, which is typical in British English. Yeah. And then I just had a bit of an existential crisis of why am I teaching this Who cares? Maybe we don't need Present Perfect anymore. Well, if I can step in here. (laughs) Please um, do. If the students are using past simple phrases with Present Perfect, then I would say that's probably wrong. Mm. So would you get them to choose which way they go? Like, would you say just stop using Present Perfect and keep with the American sort of past simple? Or would you say get your Present Perfect in shape and use it? (laughs) I like the idea of going to the gym with your present perfect (laughs) and pushing those weights. Come on. Well, I would approach this lesson in exactly the same way. Because it was your worksheet, but yeah, (laughs) go on. I wouldn't pre-teach the language. I would see where the students take it. Mm. And if they keep using American English, Mm. I might say, oh, yeah, that sounds great in American English. Yeah. Or... I might use this in present perfect in British English, but then they have the choice. I'm really glad you said that because that was where I was getting a bit mixed up and it was getting messy because there was one specific student who kept using past simple Mm -hmm. and he was not getting it. It was like he hadn't ever seen present perfect Mm. and he only wanted to use past simple. And I was thinking, actually, it's fine. If you want to use it like that, it's fine. I think I realised it's actually from the other side that's the problem. It's when they're using the present perfect with the time phrase. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've Mm -hmm. been there last week Mm -hmm. or have you been to Spain last year? Yeah. That's the hill to fight and die on. Mm -hmm. But I realised actually just allow the others, if they want to use past simple, use it. Also clarify that it's British or American English. If you're doing an exam, you might need to be aware of the differences between the two. That's also true. It wasn't an exam class, but I think the other students were getting a bit confused. Like, why is it suddenly now okay to use past simple? But I think you've got to, you've got to be a very kind of flexible teacher in that way and say, yeah, that's fine. But then explain why, but in a way that doesn't make them all feel very lost. Because I thought, how am I going to get the point to the one that's using past simple that, yeah, that's okay, but the ones that are trying to fix their present perfect don't stop doing that either because that's really important. They're both valid. They are. And it was a good lesson. And I think we got somewhere. I hope anyway, we'll see what happens in the future. But hmm, yeah, it was good to talk to you about it. I'm glad we had that conversation. I'm glad one of my fabulous worksheets also helped you. I loved it because it isn't like, oh, we're going to do Present Perfect today. It's just about a question. It starts with a question. And isn't that a nice way to start? That's lovely. And it gets them really thinking about it. Why? Why is it this one and not the other one? Very good. Very good you. I made a teaching mistake (gasps) this week. No. Well, it was kind of, in fact, it was a bit technical. Tell me more. I was showing some pictures to my students. We were talking about power tools. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Drills, nail guns. That's it. Can't think of anything else. And conversation, conversation, conversation. Then I said to student B, have a look at this picture. And my student said, I can't. It's illegal. What? I know. And then I thought, oh, yeah, the student's driving. Oh, so what, they'd already told you that at the beginning of the lesson and you forgot they were driving. In fact, I said, where are you driving? Because I could hear all the background noise. You'd already had the whole driving to somewhere conversation. I'm driving to a meeting. Um, I know, I completely forgot. (laughs) I believe you said, look at the picture. Like, they're going to try to (laughs) look at your PDF. (laughs) So I said, I'm sorry, of course, I'll get the other student to describe it to you. Maybe you can identify it. There's always a Uh, strategy. Fun. 
There's always a circumnavigation to it. So the other student had to say it's got a long thing sticking out of the front and it's got spiral shaped grooves on it. That's quite hard. It was quite hard. They're but all very similar. It, it was a lot of fun anyway. Okay. Mm, yeah, don't ever get your students to fill anything in or do gap fills when they're driving. It's a consideration when your student might be busy doing something or unable to focus completely on certain things and you have to adapt your lessons very quickly. You might mm-hmm. go into a lesson thinking, I'm going to do this, and then suddenly you find you're doing something completely different or yeah. in a different way. Yeah, that's the fun. We always have to deal with it. You think you've got a solid lesson and then the foundations just melt away. Mm. If I could just ask you one question, Gav, because, again, it came up in a lesson and I thought, mm, what would Gav do? We're doing a business lesson about logistics and shipping and that kind of thing. And I don't know how it happened, but we started talking about trainers and then... Trainers like... Shoes. Oh. Uh, I don't remember even how, but, yeah, then we were looking at pictures online. One of the students took their shoe off, showed it on the camera. (laughs) And I just caught myself and thought, what would their boss think if they walked in now and we just had, you know, Google image search results for different styles of trainer and this student's holding his trainer up in front of the camera. I don't know if that was okay. It was only for five, ten minutes in a 90-minute lesson. But do you think that's okay? I think it's absolutely fine. Yeah. I did. I think they needed a little light break, you know. I think there should be intensive learning moments and then there should be some chill out bits where we're chatting and we're just, you know, going with the flow. But still, you can stop in the middle of a trainer description and (laughs) web search shopping event and say, students, what skills are we practicing here? Really? You you would do that? I don't know. I wouldn't draw attention to it. You could describe present simple for describing things and Mm, it could go on might kill it a little bit but okay if you want to do that i just thought let's just get that done and go back to the lesson that we were talking about i think you also need to have the students on board so you need to talk about things that they're interested in things they're going to enjoy doing they don't want to be only talking about work all the time yeah 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 a little break a little opportunity for some camaraderie small talk Yeah, that's what I decided. Didn't let it go too long, but it was actually quite nice. Dissolving a little tension. (laughs) I made a game this week. Yeah? It's a form of noughts and crosses. Uh Uh-huh. Which I think Americans call... Tic-tac-toe. And what are the rules of this? Imagine you've got a gridded board. Em, describe it to me. What do you have to do? You've got to take turns with a partner to draw a cross or a nought, which is like a circle in one space of this grid. I think Mm -hmm. it's a six-square symmetrical grid. Mm -hmm. And the first person to get three in a row wins, and the other person has to stop them getting three in a row as well as trying to get three in a row themselves. That's it, getting from one side of the board to the other, I guess. How did you incorporate this into an English lesson? I divided my students into Group A and Group B. I said to them, you're going to read one of the sentences in the squares on the grid to somebody else in your group and they have to respond using so do I, neither do I, oh, I don't, or one of those other forms of response. Uh A kind of agreeing, disagreeing situation. Nice. So once they've finished, they get that square as a circle or a cross? Only if they get it right. Oh, okay. And then it's the other team's go. Nice. How did that go? It was quite successful. The students really enjoyed it. It was quite challenging because we went beyond simply so do I, me neither, mm-hmm. to using some modal verbs. Oh. Can I test you a little on this? You can. For example, you might be on my team and I say, I'll be on holiday this time next week. Do I have to agree or? You have to agree or disagree. I mean, is it the same situation for you, Em? Okay, so... I'll be on holiday this time next week. Oh, I won't. Oh, what pity. But good. You got a point for our team, Em. Thanks. Yeah, that's nice. I'm putting a naught in there. How about this one? I can't remember the last time I went swimming. Neither can I. Oh, that's another point. Okay, yes, let's do one more. Yes, yes. I'm really tired at the moment. So am I. Oh, Em, you're very good at that. That was tick, tack, toe. 
<laughs> we noted all the way across that board. Nice. So would you then follow up with a conversation thing? Because I, I feel like there were lots of things I wanted to say and ask, but as a game, you don't want to get into it. Well, I would go through the game. I would get our winners because I know just how competitive some of my students <laughs> are. I'd get to the end and then I'd go back and say, oh, Student A, what did student B say uh-huh, about this one uh-huh. here? Oh, that's really interesting. Let's talk about that for two minutes and then just keep picking out little topics that the students mentioned and have yeah. some nice conversations. It'll follow up because I think with that, it is the language of agreeing or disagreeing that you're focusing on. You don't need to get into all the details. And I think your point about it being frustrating for the students, if you're having a 10 minute conversation about each point that you're making, You just want to get on with it, don't you, and win the game. So, yeah, don't always drag it out into something like a conversation. But I think it's nice to come back to it, definitely. Don't forget to come back to it and validate some of those very interesting points the students make. Of course, if they say, I'm having a holiday, and the other one says, oh, I'm not, you would naturally want to know, well, where are you going, you know? What's the plan? Mm. So come back. But that's a lot on a teacher. Make notes, keep track who said what, and follow up. Fun, fun, fun. Um, we have a new feature to finish the episode. You mean learn, learn a, word. a word. We've put it to bed. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Instead, we have quiz of the week. Quiz of the week. Is there going to be a jingle? Well, do you want to try it with me? Uh, yeah. Quiz, quiz of, of the, the week. week. And each week, <laughs> I will test you on something. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was this? This is news Mine. to me. Okay. Because I love quizzes so much. You love quizzes and everybody loves quizzes. So I hope the followers are following very carefully. They've got their pen and paper ready. Okay, Gav. Go ahead. This week, I'm going to quiz you on the top 15 essential items and equipment for online teachers. Oh, 15. All right. Computer, laptop. PC. Are they three or is that one? That's one. Oh. Well, laptop or tablet here, but... Um, tablet, yeah. okay. You could use... Very modern. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, something like that, yeah. Headphones. Headset with microphone, very good. Uh, that's one as well. And before we start... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. We should just mention that this information comes from Goats on the Road. Goats on the road. Dot com. Greatest of all time. I was going to ask you what GOAT stands for, but you know it already. I do. Everyone knows that. Greatest of all time. So, I've already said computer, headphones. So yeah, headset with microphone. Very microphone good. Microphone isn't three. That's like only two I've got so far. Em, you don't have a separate microphone and headphones, do you? Webcam. Webcam, very good. Oh. HD camera. You've cool. got the top three already. That's the top three. <laughs> that might be my limit. Um... Are we going to say like pen, paper? Or? I don't think people use pens and paper. No, okay. Em. I'm losing it now. How are 15. you? How are you connecting? You need a Wi-Fi, of, of course. Of course, you've got internet connection. And this is specific to teaching. Teaching online, yeah. So am I going to go into like software? Ethernet like... cord. Number six is a backup internet source. I'm doing this quiz, not you. Sorry, uh, is that relevant for you? Yeah, I'd use my phone data if I needed to. Do you? Yeah, definitely. That's very good. Many times. So you've got a backup source ready. Right, you've got the top six already. We're flying through this. I'm losing this. Microfiber cloth. Is not on the list, but I can see that you might want to keep your laptop. I'd add that. I would definitely add that. And monitor clean. Um, Are you going to end up on the floor without this one? Chair. Yeah. All right, so yes, chair, cushion. Well, I'll... I'll take desk and chair. All That's right. Number seven. But um, yes, I think you also need a cushion. Comfy cushion. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be a cup of tea, cup of something, drink. No, that's Stay not. Stay hydrated. I agree with you. That should be there. But no, no, no details like that. Oh. Does this include things like we've talked about Jamboard or Google? What's it called? Classroom? This sort of thing? Not specifically. No. Do you use that every time you teach? No. How about the students being able to see you if you've got your HD cam on? You need a lot of... Light. Light. It could be (laughs) overhead lights, could be desk lamps. If you're lucky, you've got a window with light coming through. I'm going to say the sun is part of my equipment. (laughs) Yep, need the sun. Your sun, is it? (laughs) Yep. All right, of course, you may be an influencer and therefore you have a selfie 
ring light. Okay, yes, yes. I do think about lighting, but not to that extent. <laughs> I wouldn't want one of those in my face for 90 minutes. No, and that's number nine. So Really? Yeah. That's <laughs> and number 10 is professional photography lights. Hold on, what? what's going on? Hang on. <laughs> the last three were all about lighting. Right, move forward then. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? We want our laptop to be sitting in the right position. Of course, a stand, some kind of Laptops. elevated box system. So you're not getting neck ache. Yes, very important. That is very important. Now, the next few are physical things around, in front of, that you might want to see or touch or something. And what can the student see behind you? You mean, actually, me. There's a painting. Oh, right. A sofa. This is your classroom background, number 12. So you could put on one of those, you could put on a background. Yeah. Or I think a lot of teachers have their whiteboard. Ah, yes. Other things. Toys? Yes. Like toys if you're teaching kids, that sort of thing. Or adults. Those would be your 3D props. 3D props. Okay, 3D props. And on your screen or on pieces of paper. Yeah. These are your 2D props. Yeah. That's 13 and 14. So we've got one left, Em. I do not know how you're going to guess this one. Is it a fidget spinner? No. Um. But it could be. Is it a cat? Again, no, but it could be. Common, very common to have cats around. Um, am I close? Not really. Em, how are you going to motivate your students? On... <laughs> Just imagine you've done your tic-tac-toe, noughts and crosses game, and the winners... Huh? They get rewards. Oh, online rewards. Number 15, online teachers' rewards. Like a firework gif. Perhaps. Or maybe you wear that special hat that's got all the stars and you do a little dance for them. Well done, student. You got present perfect correct. Here's your little dancey dance. (laughs) I'm going to try that one next week, see how that goes down. (laughs) Well done, Em. You got all of the answers. Your reward is my little starry hat dancey dance. Uh Uh-huh. I see why you were doing this whole thing now. This was what you were leading to. Oh, I'm sorry the people can't see it on the podcast. It's beautiful, everyone. Really, you have to see it to believe it. And that's the end of Quiz Quiz of of the the Week. week. I've forgotten the jingle. (laughs) Thank you to goatsontheroad.com. Fantastic teaching English equipment. We'll put a link in the show notes. I didn't really feel like I was keeping track of that, but it was fun. It was good. I think there should always be a quiz at the end of every episode of Gavin M's How to English Pod. Sounds like there will be, Gav. That is a great way to make a vocabulary list fun. It is, and then just send that list to your students at the end of the lesson. Yeah. Em, it was great chatting with you. Great to catch up. We should do this every fortnight. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that sounds about right, Gav. Every fortnight. Speak to you in two weeks. Bye-bye. 